Hey guys, welcome to Code Decode. In this video, we are going to learn about some solid principles interview questions. So let's get started. So the very first question is, why do we really need solid principles? Why are we not satisfied with design principles? So the answer is, solid principles are basically used to reduce the dependencies. So that when you developers change one area of software, you should not impact the other areas also. So this is the main in, in real IT world. What happens is whenever a new requirement comes, what changes is your code and hence to reduce the more number of changes to the same code, which increases the chances of breaking your code. You better have these changes segregated and separated without impacting each other. So basically make these things segregated and standalone solid principles came into picture. I hope this much is clear. Let's move ahead. Why solid principles were there. Additionally, they are intended to make our designs easy to understand, maintain and extend. Ultimate, ultimately, basically, using these design principles, it makes our life easier to avoid issues and build adaptive and agile software. Now, in very short words, we can say that it is just to make your life easy. It's for the better, better code readability, maintainability and testability. These are different from design patterns. And now we will cover what are these solid principles and we will see why do I focus so much on these principles and how using these principles, your coding style will change and will be much more effective. So the five principles in solid principles are single responsibility. That is for S. O is for open and close principle. L is for Liskov substitution principle. I is for interface segregation principle. This is with interface as good as single responsibility with classes i'll tell you how these both are same it's just that first is is with classes and the fourth one is with interfaces the last one you all know dependency inversion we have all seen in the previous spring videos we have all covered dependency uh, inversion principles so again solid principles are single responsibility open and close principle Liskov substitution principle, interface segregation principle and dependency inversion. Not much to remember about. Cryo.do is a platform that believes in learning by doing. If you're trying to get into some real good product based company and lack in having real time experience in projects, then this is the go to platform for you guys. They have created some really extensive programs for you like full stack development program, back end development program, which covers loads and loads of real world problems, which can which you can actually add into your resumes. They also have an amazing program called as fellowship program in software development with amazing placement guarantee they are fully online with 9 to 12 months you don't have to go anywhere stay at the comfort of your home they have even one week of free trial they have placement guarantees with package as high as 18 lp in these product based companies the next bit starts from 16 october so you can hurry up with this course you will have an exposure to 20 plus mini projects and 4 plus internship grade projects we have well-structured interactive workshops and live sessions from professionals. They have in-depth coverage of data structures and algorithm, which is very important in terms of interviews. They have placement guarantees. They have referrals. They have guide, career guidance from experienced coaches. You can also go through the link given in the description below and get 10% discount with a good percentage of scholarships and many more perks like free guide to interviews, resumes, guide to mini projects so that you can have guidance all free. So hurry up, check that. Let's get started with the single responsibility principle. It states that one class should have one and only one responsibility and not more than that. Now I'll give an example. So suppose I have a pojo called as employee. Now in this employee pojo, I have two things, ID and name. Now, suppose it says that you only in one responsibility. So the task of my employee is to handle the state of my employee object. Now, if I put these strings, that is with respect to addresses, this actually violates my single responsibility principle because it is now the task of this employee also becomes to manage the addresses also. So rather than doing that, one class should have only one responsibility. So this violates our single responsibility principle. I'll tell you why it violates it, which specifically means you should write change and maintain a class only for one purpose. So I should change and maintain my employee POJO only for maintaining the state of employee. The change in class should only occur when there is change in particular object or instance. So suppose we have an employee and address class like I've already shown you. If we want to change a state of employee, then we don't need to modify address class and vice versa. If you have merged both the single POJOs, then modification in one field 
will modify the whole pojo including employee so suppose that now you are in real world i'll give you an example modify that i don't want second line of address or modify that i want third line of address also so the good ed- programming practice will say create another class called as address and have all these fields divided into your address class suppose i'll put some getters and setters for all of them and now in employee you can use happily your address class and use it if you want this is as simple as the single responsibility principle you don't have to change this employee class to modify anything which is related to your address class like enter the third line enter the fourth line remove the second and third line you don't have to modify your employee class you can happily use it it's not going to affect it so this is an example of single responsibility principle now now the question will come uh, have you ever seen the worst single responsibility principle violation so the answer is yes when i merge my entity with my service that is the worst part so we have seen the crud example right this is our crud example we have our employee entity this is completely separate and we have a service and this is completely separate now i have that time also told you that we should have one repo so we have one repository also and this repository is responsible for all your data manipulations like saving and deletion in this we are just using the business logics so this is the way how you should segregate your task into your employee entity your service and your repository this is responsible only for data transferring this is responsible for business logic this is responsible for your dao handling what is not right you should not write any kind of saving logic or business logic into this it will be the worst violation of this principle now if this is clear will ask why single responsibility principle is that important because in real world requirement changes and so does your code implementation to cater those changing requirement the more your responsibility your class has more often it will change and to prevent these frequent changes you better implement single responsibility principle now you will ask me what will happen if it uh, changes frequently what's the what's wrong with that so the answer to that is the more you change it the more the existing functionality which is already implemented is going to move here and there so because of that some code might break and you might get into problem during production so better make less changes to the existing code secondly the testing is much more easier because the test classes will have fewer test cases because your class is having only single responsibility now if you come to this case this employee service is only responsible for four things adding an employee deleting an employee updating an employee and get all employees so basically few methods all related to one employee adding or deleting so it's basically all these method change one object that is employee so this is a stand alone class which is does not violate our single responsibility principle it happily maintains your single responsibility principle in your application so it's much more easier to understand you if i give you an example i'll tell you go and update something in your employee uh, class so where will you go you will go and add those functionality into service class because i have asked you to write the business logic for that so it is easier to understand less functionality also means less dependencies and so best practice says use less in your application and break the god classes into smaller classes and modules we have already seen that rather than writing everything in one pojo your your uh, getters and setters your business logic your dao logic don't do that divide everything into layers and your application will work like a charm okay so the next part is what is open and close principle the open and close principle that the software components or the classes that you develop should be open for extension but closed for modification so what does that mean open for extension means that you can extend it and include extra functionalities in your code without altering or affecting the existing implementation and closed for modification means you can after adding all the extra functionality the existing code should not be modified if you understand these three points i'll make sure that if you implement these principles it is it's like uh, you are removing 90% of your chances that by making your changes or by catering to the new requirement 
you will not affect the existing functionality your existing code will not break so that is why i impose so much attention to this principle which is open and close principle because by implementing this you will reduce the chances of the existing code breakage to 90% now in real world you must must have noticed that you change something to cater a new requirement and other functionality breaks which which is because of your change to prevent that this principle comes in hand now you will ask me okay that is so great we can reduce the chances to 90% how will i implement that so it's very simple suppose you have an existing class now you should design another class in such a way that whenever an another developer wants to change a flow in a specific condition all they need is to extend the class and override some functions and that's it you're good to go now i'll give you an example okay so this was my employee class okay so it says that this is an employee class which is having id and name it has a constructor and it has a method called as print me now i need that i need one specific type of employee whose training location is also known so what i can do here the worst part what i can do here is i can use string training place okay and i can append that in the constructor and what will happen all the code which is using the constructor to initialize my employee class breaks so you might have 10 or hundreds of classes which creates an employee object and do something with it if you change your constructor and if they might have been using this constructor your code will break so this is the worst scenario of not using open and close principle so how would i implement this open and close principle so rather than doing this you better create another class say trained employees and open for extension so employee class is open for extension so i'm going to extend it use what we have now if you have extended it okay it will be needing a constructor for sure so first of all i need one private string training place or training areas and with this constructor i'll also pass training area now with this you call your employees constructor initiate it with name and this and also initiate this dot training areas with training areas simple so what we have used we have used our open and close principle this was closed for modification fine no problem but at least you are open for extension so i'll implement all my new functionalities into this with extending the employee class and using this way to Im implement new functionality so you have now catered your requirement to add a new training area and now you have not modified the existing one so everybody is happy now you'll ask me does this really work so let's try if this really work and you are still able to print something so the old people might be using the print method and will be using this so even they are not breaking and even you are not breaking because in any ways you are going to use this constructor to initialize their id and name and also you are using the training area so this is how you implement your open and close principle if you want demonstration i'll give you a quick demonstration to it so i'll just make a client over here i'll make a main method just to make sure that the existing class is not broken i'll create an employee class object with a name and id so my one is my id and name is like code simple if i do that now i'll use employee dot print let's see if this works answer is yes my employee id is one employee name is code one so this makes sure that your existing is not broken also it also makes sure that your existing is also not broken uh, and your new work is a new task is also working so i'm taking the trainee employees and new training employees and it will be needing three things so where is it uh, trained say suppose online and let's try to print it okay so it still have a method not overridden so we don't have 
overridden print me method so what it will, what it will use it will use the existing print method and let's see if it prints see again your existing code also doesn't break anything so this is the beauty of open and close principle you create a pojo and we have already done this so i'm not going to make you go through this so this is how you implement open and close principle now you'll ask me why so again i've given the answer to this many times this principle segregates the existing code from modified modified code so that it provides better sustainability stability maintainability and minimizes the changes in your code okay guys so i have many more things to cover like liskov substitution principle why is it needed iasp that is the interface segregation principle why is it important and dep dependency inversion principle and why is it important but the time doesn't permit me if you want me to cover all these please let me know in the comment section i'll do that